Okay, um, our um, improvement and services committee meeting will come to order and um, the first thing on the agenda is our roll call. We have Alder Presley. Here. Here. Alder, is it Delee or Delee? Or Delee? Delee. Uh, Delee, okay. Alder Delee. Here. Alder Weary. Here. And myself, so we are all here. And the next thing on the agenda is the election of um, chairperson. Is there anybody that would like to nominate the chair? Yeah, close enough. I'll nominate Joy Presley. Okay, and so nomination for Joy Presley, and I'm nominating Alder Weary. So, um, Alder Presley, how do you want to vote? I vote for myself. Alder Dilley? I vote for Joy Presley. Alder Weary? Uh, I vote for myself. Myself, I'm voting for Alder Weary. So we have a two to two. Where do we go from there? Go again? Please. You can go again, as we discussed in the last, or you can uh, agree by a majority vote to do some sort of chance where you draw a name, with a coin, since there are only two. Um, those are the options. Or we could do what we did last, where I leave the meeting. Uh, we yes, then you're pushing it off to a future date, but then you have to agree on who will chair the meeting for tonight. Make a motion to hold the election of the chair and vice chair till the next meeting. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Looking for a motion? I'll make a motion. Alder Delee makes a motion. Point of word. Do we have to um, do we have to decide who's going to run this meeting uh, uh, by a vote? Oh, I thought we were. Well, she she was the vice chair of INS last time. Otherwise, I could take it because I am the most senior, and that has been historically the way we've done it. I mean, if you want <laughs> if you're going to be coached from somebody in the audience, you know, former Alder Dorf. <laughs> I don't think it matters who runs the meeting. I'll make you a motion for I'll make a motion for Alder Act to run the meeting. Second. Uh, okay. Uh, motion by Alder Dewey and second by Alder Reed. So all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Stirring up Thank trouble you. right away. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for a motion um, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Alder Dewey makes a motion to approve. Second. Second by Alder Weary. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we will move on to the approval of the minutes. Looking for a motion. To approve. Motion by Alder Weary. Second. So, second by Alder Delee. And all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and that passes. So we're going to move on to regular business. Um, number one, consideration with possible action on request by Harry Missouri. 840 South Monroe Avenue to rescind invoice number 181677 in the amount of $101.84 for snow and ice removal on January 18, 2024 at 840 South Monroe Avenue. Uh, Director? Included in your packet, we provided you information, first of which is a copy of the slip filled out by field staff. Property was inspected on January 15th at 9.32 p.m. Uh, we received a complaint by email on January 18th of 2024. Uh, staff did go out to the property at 1.30, uh, spent 15 minutes clearing the property. There are photographs included showing the condition of the sidewalk before and after. Subsequent to the clearing on site, an invoice was submitted to the property owner for $101.84. Thank you, Director. Is there anybody here to speak on this item? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to open the floor. Seconded. Motion by Alder Delay to open the floor. Seconded by Alder Presley. And all in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. I, I sat through the last meeting, so the way I understand this, there's no, it's not something where we have rules of edit, evidence involved or, or anything where we provide. Uh, just more of a common uh, conversation, I guess, right? Yes. 
So here's exactly what happened. Um, I'm a new resident of, uh, of Green Bay. Oh, sorry. Yes, my, my name is Harry A. Mazahiri, and I own a house at 840 South Monroe Avenue. Uh, been, a, been an attorney for 40. Right been an attorney for over 40 years, um, and um, have uh, several advanced degrees in land use planning, and um, uh, represented a number of uh, very large cities and, and towns across the across the country. Um, and have done a number of other things. But anyway, so the, the simple story is this. Uh, we had 11 inches of snow um, in this last snowstorm. Um, I took my very large snow blower out and uh, cleared the path of my sidewalk and my driveway. And then subsequent to that, um, um, I noticed um, that uh, the snow plows had, had taken the 11 inches of snow to, uh, to three, almost four feet of snow on my one section of very restricted sidewalk. And um, I went out and tried to clear the nearly four feet of snow with my very large snow blower, and it was unsuccessful. I then contacted someone to try to clear the snow, um, but was unable to get anyone to move out there to do that within a 24-hour period. Um, I then um, um, uh, contacted the city and asked them what they would like me to do, and, and I received a response of nothing. They didn't, I didn't get any response at all, uh, other than they would call me back and I'd receive the call back. Um, the two other um, uh, interesting facts about this is that uh, on um, Monroe Avenue, and again, I, I'm just speaking off, I have to show you pictures, I have uh, plot plans and so forth, but on Monroe, Monroe Avenue, Monroe Avenue um, the sidewalk and the, and the grass area and the curb is 148 inches wide on the east side. And on uh, Poirier Avenue, Poor, Poor, Lear, Poor Lear Avenue, um, on my side of the street, um, the the sidewalk and the grass area is 70 inches wide, but on the uh, on the south side of the street, it's 170 inches wide. So there's a very very narrow strip of land, and uh, on the inside portion of that is, is bordered by a very old uh, um, hedge. I think I believe the hedge is somewhere around 80 some years old, 70 80 years old. So there's nowhere to put the snow. A B. There's a number of pieces of equipment that exist there to run the traffic system. So with those three things in mind, um, I, um, um, I, I contacted the, the Public Works Department and told them that from my experience and my understanding that um, it was inappropriate for them to, to levy a fine on me um, since um, three things had occurred. One, the snow that was put on, the, on my sidewalk was not snow that was generated by the storm, but the snow that was generated by their snow clearing activity. Um, and with 11 inches of snow coming in the storm, it doesn't become four, inches, four feet of snow. That's the first thing. My understanding of, uh, of things is that uh, there, um, you know, I'm more than willing to be a cooperative person, um, but uh, the fact that I was fined for uh, um, an action that was beyond my control was, uh, was something that concerned me. Secondarily, I believe the way that the snow was removed or pushed onto the section was, didn't take into account the fact that uh, the, the areas that I mentioned to you before are very narrow on my side of the street versus very wide on the other side of the street. So if they push the snow on the other side, it would be very easy to clear because it's uh, 100 inches wider. On my side, it's uh, 70 inches plus, a, uh, as I said, a 68-foot six, uh, hedge. And uh, plus the traffic equipment that sits there, a big, a large, very large, uh, about four feet uh, um, by about four feet of uh, stainless steel traffic equipment that sits and blocks the ability that I have to move the snow off of uh, uh, off the sidewalk. So with th those things in mind, I felt that the um, uh, the fine was uh, 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 was not appropriate. And uh, I can provide you much more information. I have detailed studies of. Uh, of things and so forth and so on, but uh, I thought this would just be a, um, a direct conversation and uh, I provide my version of things and uh, obviously I'm sure the Public Works Department will provide their version. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Mazahiri? Mazahiri, yes ma'am. Mazahiri, okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. If you do have pictures, you, you can circulate those. It, it, you don't have to, but if you do have them, don't feel like you can't. No, that's fine. Oh. I, I believe you see the pictures, and what, what I'm telling you, I, I know to be the truth. And if we okay. there's any question of my veracity, we can look at all the pictures I have. But I think that uh, um, what I said is uh, is uh, probably corrupt. I haven't seen the, the the city's pictures, but I'm pretty sure they, they corroborate what I said. That uh, um, at 11 inches of snow that came down, there was a, a bank of about three to four feet of uh, very hot, hot, hard packed ice that was sitting on my sidewalk with no place to put it. 
as I said, my my thought again um, from just you know being around the block for a long time is that um, it would make sense for the, the the plow trucks not to push the snow on the on the um, on the, that narrow side of the street because there's nowhere for it to go. And if they pushed it on the other side that had 170 inches, versus my side had 70 inches, um, there would be a much more uh, much more likely to have the snow cleared and not uh, um, having them come out and look at it. Because from what I understand from talking to the people who had lived in the house before, this is a, a problem that's occurred on, on numerous occasions. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Are, the, Presley? are the photos in uh, our packet? They are. Uh, and so are those the photos he submitted? No, those oh. are photos that my staff took before yeah. and after they put them. Yeah, I, I was okay. there. I, I have photos, but as I said, I don't want, I, I didn't, I, I if we're going that route, then it, you know I, I'll bring in expert witnesses and so forth. I didn't think that was something we wanted to do at this point. I believe that uh, um, I made my point that uh, um, about what the situation was and um, what what I felt was uh, um, an appropriate solution. And uh, if we need to, at another stage, we can have experts and uh, and look through the videos I have and uh, um, the photos I have and so forth. But uh, I mean, if it's that's sort of where I am. Okay, thank you. And yep. it, it, it's it's not about expert witnesses, but if you have pictures and you'd like to show them to us, like all I, the I, I, I don't believe they'll they'll, uh, they'll in any way uh, um, be different from the ones that the city has. I, I I'm assuming so because uh, I was there and they were there and and we were there about the same time. So I I don't imagine their pictures are much different different than mine. But if uh, um, their pictures don't show between you know nearly four feet of snow on the sidewalk, then that certainly is different from what the situation was that I saw. Okay. As I said, I'm, I'm making that, I can make that that, that uh, statement under oath and, uh, um, um, you know, and, and, and so forth. Okay, so in the um, information that you you provided, the letter you had said that you had surveil surveillance footage and do not see any of your staff at any time enter my property. I do see several of your snow moving vehicles pile many feet of snow on my property and adjacent intersection. So it indicates that you're saying they weren't there and they didn't clear the snow. No, no, That's no. what but, but I my, would say it indicates. My, my point was simply simply this, that the date and time they said they were there, um, the, nothing shows up in my surveillance video. Now, um, why that is, I don't have the faintest idea, but the surveillance video, um, covers all four all four areas of my of my property, and um, it's run by a, a company called Google, um, who runs the, the video system that that, that I use, and um, that's the time and date stamp that they provided me. I, I don't have control over that, so certainly I could uh, ask them if they had problems with their time and date stamps. But uh, I just what I did was when someone said that they when I talked with a very nice lady at the Public Works Department, and I asked her. Um, you know what date and time were they there? I then pulled up the video at that date and time, and I didn't see anybody there. But I mean, you know, um, nothing's perfect, and it's certainly a possibility for a misunderstanding. But I, I don't dispute the fact that they were there that they cleared the snow. It's just a matter of when she said they were there at this time and and so forth. I pulled up my computer and I looked at this this date and this time, and, and, and there was nothing there. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anybody else have anything? All right. Um, anything else you have to say? No, as I said, we'll be I, discussing it further, but we have to close the floor and just. No, that's it. why, as I said, it, and I, I could make a, a number of other legal points, but I'm not sure if that's uh, appropriate to make at this point because I, I think the, this matter um, rides on the fact, uh, the, the points that I made, and um, um, I wouldn't make. No, I, I don't want to make any other points. I, let's just leave it as it is. And uh, um, but uh, as I said, as I said to the lady from the, the public works department. Um, my understanding, well, that, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it makes things antagonistic if I bring up some of my legal points. So let's just let's just leave it as it is. Okay, thank you for sure. Thank you. And thank you very much. Sure. Close the floor. Second, second by second by Alder Delete, and all in favor say aye. 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 And the floor is now closed. You can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director Grenier, do you have anything else to add? Yes, one of the most important things that I think needs to be addressed is this is not a citation, this is not a fine. It is a fee for service. Mr. Mazahiri had just stated, if I heard correctly, that he does not dispute that we were there. This is a fee for service. The service is required under ordinance, 
And for those of you who are new to the council, <coughs> just a, a brief uh, history lesson for you. On January 25th in 2011, we had a resident on the near northwest part of town, right off of Elp Avenue. Uh, individual was wheelchair bound, was on his way home after work, found sidewalks were not cleared. He then had to travel in the road. He was struck by a passing motorist and left in a snowbank to die. The city was involved in a lawsuit. Following that lawsuit, we changed and amended our ordinance to require that snow be removed from public sidewalks within 24 hours after the cessation of a snow event. And if that snow is not removed, the city has the authority to go out and remove it and charge a fee for service. So there is no citation here, there is no fine. This is simply a fee for service for work that public works have. May I provide a rebuttal to that? We even have to open the floor. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Okay, we have a motion by Elder Dewey. Seconded. Second by Elder Presley. All in favor say aye. 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 My, my rebuttal is this. Again, um, in my more than 40 years of being an attorney, um, my understanding of, of the law is very is very clear that the city is may, may provide may provide me with uh, um, a bill to clean, clean the snow off the, off, off the thing, uh, off my ground. But the, pro the problem here is not that I'm willing to pay that, it's that they're charging me for their own um, mistakes, their, their own uh, uh, processes that didn't work functionally. And I complained to them several times about the fact that if all they had to do was push the snow on the other side of the street, we wouldn't have this problem because the other side of the street had a hundred extra inches of space to move and, 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 uh, and deal with the snow. And the other, the other point is that um, my understanding is that uh, I can't be fined or charged for services that were in connection with an action that was taken by the city without my consent and without following a proper process and procedure. I'm 100% certain of that. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Have you have any questions? Sure. Alder Weary. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mazzari. Uh, I did have oh, one question. Oh, he's got a question for you. Oh, sir. sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I, um, I don't move too fast. Sorry about that. So even though it may be much more difficult to plow a four-lane road all in one direction and pile all of that snow on the other side of the road, you're saying that's what should have been done? No, um, what, I, what I'm saying is it's a two-lane road, the best I understand it. Poirier is a two-lane road. Um, okay. uh, on Monroe, it's four lanes. Okay. On Poirier, it's two lanes. And um, the people that I consulted, including the people I tried to get to come over to help me um, um, move the snow, as well as the people that lived in the building before, so this has been a repeat problem. And the problem is there's no place to put the snow on my side of the street. There, there's a eight foot, six to eight foot hedge, and then there's uh, traffic equipment, and then there's a very, very narrow berm. So the only place to put the snow is back on the road. And that that's obviously not something that I want to do because that's certainly not appropriate. And um, it's right by the intersection too. And again, I'm trying to, my, my, my point is not, not the hundred dollars, not the, not, the, not the money to pay for this, but it's just the process. And, you know, I, I've been involved with this sort of stuff for, decades and and, and my, my concern has always been making sure the process is right that's it if the process is right I, I paid the hundred dollars um, you know ten times over but it's just a matter of uh, I felt very um, concerned about the process and I wanted to come here today and make sure I voiced my concerns so that you heard them and um, you know whatever you decide to do about that is fine I just want to be very clear that I'm very certain about uh, um, uh, the, the, the law here and very certain about the what I feel is a, 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 a process and I feel it's not working right now. Okay, thank you. Thank Does you. anybody else have any comments? I'd, oh, I'd, I'd like to say, like, just to give you some insight sure. from a plow truck driver. Sure. I plow for the Green Bay Public Schools. Moving snow from one side of the street to the opposite side of the street while traffic is coming down the opposite side of the street is extremely hard. Um, moving all the snow from one side of the street to another side of the street isn't possible. There's plenty of places in this city that we have locations where the sidewalks are one foot wide next, or the, the green space next to the sidewalk is one foot wide and, and the city has to come out and bring snow blowers out to load up dump trucks just to clear those to make it a two lane road again. 
No, I, 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 don't, um, I, I don't disagree with you. Here's what I did was I, I, I contact, oh, I'm sorry, you're done? I don't want to interrupt you. Um, no, th the one other statement I wanted to have, and ju I just wanted your perspective on it, is if a plow truck plows snow up on o onto a sidewalk, whose responsibility is that to, to clear? Um, my understanding of, of uh, my understanding is if the snow is plowed, if the, the snow plow puts the, the snow onto the sidewalk, um, that it's the, 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 the city's responsibility to, to, re to remove the snow. I, I can give you um, a, 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 a lot of, uh, um, we, could, we could start talking legal stuff, but I, I think it's just, I mean, in the, in the big scheme of things, the, the main concern that I had um, have, have this. Uh, now I understand the snow truck driver. It's, it's no plow driver. I talked to a guy, the guy, the guy who, who was going to um, uh, plow my snow, uh, but, but they, it, it, they wasn't able to. And I talked to several others, and I talked to the, the person who ran the public works department. This city I used to uh, uh, work with, and I asked him all. The, I asked those guys all these questions. I wanted to be sure before I came here that I had a very good understanding of what was involved, so I didn't come and look like uh, someone complaining about getting a hundred dollar fine. I'm not complaining about getting a hundred dollar fine. I'm just my complaint is simply that um, I, the the process uh, is, is what it is. I, I get your point about putting it on one side or the other. It, it's just a matter of uh, of um, I guess I, I tell you what the other plow drivers told me is that the when you're when you're at the intersections and so forth, usually what they do if there's a lot of snow is they they come in and they clear the snow instead of just pushing it around. And this is one of the major intersections in the city. I mean, you've got two major streets, ambulance is going back and forth, and uh, um, you know, just pushing all the snow up on the on the neighbors' yards, um, you know, make making the, the street clean. But in, in the in the end, where are they going to put the snow? I, I I showed you that thing. The only way I could put that snow is back on the street, where I have to I have to buy I have to rent a dump truck and have the dump truck come in and pick up the snow. And it's it, that's not something that happens. Um, you know, very frequently. You know, how often do we get 11 inches of snow? Not very frequently, but I mean, in those sorts of situations, my understanding is that a lot of the snow on the intersection should be, instead of pushed, be cleared. Again, that's maybe a, a point of process, and I, I'm, I'm no expert. I talk to people that do this all the time in cities that get a lot more snow than here, and some that get less, and um, um, that's what they told me. But I, I, I'm not I'm not here. I don't want to be head of the public works department. All I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that I made my point about the about the process. And um, you know, been around this thing for a long, long time. And uh, the most important thing for me, and the only reason I took this time to come here to talk to you guys, is not about the hundred bucks. Is that I was concerned about the process. That if I'm getting, I'm getting this, uh, I'm having to pay for uh, for the city's snow that they put on my on my sidewalk and the whole process. Then. What about the, the old lady across the street? I mean, she didn't have the ability to come here and talk to you guys. And then um, it's, it's just a, I mean, I, I've worked with cities for a long time. And the most important thing to me is that everyone understands and agrees with the processes. And to me, I saw this as a process that, that was broken. And I wanted to come here and, and give you what my, my, my learned opinion was. And you know, not talk about laws and all this other stuff, but say, this is the way I understand the situation. This is what I feel um, is uh, is right, and what and so forth. And that's where I. Have. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Does well, anybody else have any questions? Sorry, last oh, question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do see where you're coming from, um, but if you do follow that that train of thought, that anything that the city places they have to remove, what would happen to every single driveway? No, the driveways are a different situation. There's actually. Uh, I'll give you. I'll, I'll break into legalese here a little bit. This stuff goes back to uh, back, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. The driveways are separate from the the, the, the sidewalks. The drive, there's a whole set of laws and and case law going about how what's responsible for driveways. The city, if they block your driveway, that's your responsibility. You got to you got to unblock it. If they block it again, that's your responsibility to fix. The other sections of the of the property are the ones that um, that. Um, Create the issue, and at least I can. No, that's good to know. We, we, we can come here, and I can pull out books. And, but it, 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 this is just—I made my point, and I, I understand your point. And it, what you're saying is absolutely correct. The driveways are a different story. Appreciate it. Okay, cool. thank you. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? All right. Um, make a motion. Or, um, looking for a motion. I'm going to close the discussion. Okay. Close the floor. Close the floor by um, Alder Presley. Second. Second by Alder Weary. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 
and that passes the, the floor is closed. Um, Director Grenier, do you have anything to add? Uh, Wisconsin state statute does provide an opportunity for a municipality to place the responsibility for construction, operation, and maintenance of publicly owned sidewalk within the public right of way on the adjacent property owner. The city of Green Bay has elected to exercise that power, which is why the maintenance responsibility then falls to the property owner. I, I do have a question. Um, when they came out to clear it, did they, where did they put the snow? They put it back on the terrace, the area between the sidewalk and the back, uh, the back curb. Okay. Looking at the photographs, you can see that there was sufficient room for us to put it there. Okay, all right. Um, so, um, what are the wishes of the committee? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Chairperson. Um, there, there are a lot of locations like this around the city. I mean, I think we all have them in our district, and so. If that were to be a policy, I would imagine, I can't even imagine the extra workforce we would need to follow back around on all those sidewalks. I, I'm, not, you know, I'm saying if that's the way you went, then it would apply to everybody. It wouldn't be just here, it would be. Right. And there's a lot. <laughs> Sidewalk? <laughs> that Approximately way. 2 million lineal feet. Well, and, and especially the ones with the narrow terrace. I mean, you know, because of the larger terrace, yeah, there's more room for it to spill on. But I think we all have areas with a very small terrace in it. I mean, everybody has jokes about it. It's, you know, here comes the plow. All right, got to go back out and clean it up. But uh, I, I couldn't imagine the size of the workforce, the, the expense that, that it would entail to, to go back around. So I, that has to be a, a factor here, too. Well, when, when we get into these types of discussions, one of the, 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 the areas that I often refer to would be uh, Main Street or Mason. Uh, four-lane arterial facilities and zero terrace. We have sidewalk immediately at the back of the curb when we are blowing four lanes or two lanes in one direction. Uh, oftentimes with a minimum of one grader and two trucks running an echelon, so we're doing it all at once. Uh, so the grader plows to the truck, the truck plows to the outside truck, the outside truck throws to the, uh, the curb. Um, so all of that is at one swoop is being uh, funneled off to the sidewalk and same thing those property owners with no terrace are responsible and oftentimes uh, especially if you think of main street businesses i'm talking particularly in that area between grove street and elizabeth okay so earl stanton awning the riverside ballroom if you're familiar with that area okay a lot of those businesses are zero lot like they're right up on the back of curb so they have to take that snow, remove it, and either go around behind their property and dump it off, of the, off in the back or things like that. Uh, we sympathize. We give. We understand. Um, again, there isn't anything punitive here. This is a fee for service. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, certainly a difficult situation. I mean, I've seen it a number of times in 20 years. Um, it's not uncommon, though. Difficult, but not uncommon. Um, I feel for it. But uh, I, I do think it's the applicant's challenge to solve, you know, given what we have in place. And so I'll, I'll make a motion to deny. Um, Seconded. Okay, we have a motion by Elder Berry, seconded by Elder Presley. All those in favor say aye. Hi. Hi. Okay, and that passes to um, deny the request. Um, and this, just for your um, information, it will be in our um, city council for the full council next Tuesday, uh, May 7th. If you um, would like to come, you, you would be able to speak. The, um, the floor would be open for you if you'd like to speak. How do I, how do I raise a set amount of time to speak? I'm sorry? How do I arrange a set amount, of, set amount of time? You get three minutes okay. well, I have at, at the full council. We uh, here were a little um, you know, less legalistic on that mm -hmm. and it gave you a lot more than three minutes. No, 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 no I understand. I, I, yeah. I just, as I said, I, I, I really don't want this to be, but uh, I have um, um, uh, several uh, witnesses from Madison as well as uh, uh, two other people that are going to come in from out of town. So. Uh, just need to understand what the appropriate forum is for that. Yeah, and so it'll be next Tuesday at six o'clock in the council chambers. Next Tuesday, six o'clock. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank um, you.
Uh, number two, consideration of possible action on request by Melissa Steffen of 406 Ontario Road to res reverse the action of the Common Council on August 22nd, 2023, approving the need for sidewalk to be installed on the south side of Sitka Street between Robert Lane and McCullough Heights Trail and to rescind the resolution passed by Common Council on May 5th, 2024, ordering the sidewalk constructed. Director? Before we start, we would like to note that there is a Scribner's error in, okay. the, uh, in the agenda item. It is not May 5th, it is March 5th. Okay, because May 5th didn't happen yet. <laughs> so we want to make sure we get that clear. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Okay, to yes. Uh, when Sitka Street was reconstructed in 2019-2020, uh, city staff recommended installation of sidewalk from Superior Road to McCall Heights Trail including areas of infill where discontinuous sidewalks was previously installed. This action was required due to proposed developments of what would eventually become the Bradley Estate Subdivision, the Sitka Heights Condominium Development, both of which have significant frontage to Sitka Street. The city Subdivision Ordinance in effect at the time requires that sidewalks be installed on one side of Sitka Street. Staff evaluated the area and determined that based on the population center being on the south side of Sitka Street, with the destination of Crystal McCullough Park on the north side of Sitka on Ontario. As such, the requirement to place sidewalk was selected to be on the south side of Sitka between Superior Road to Ontario Road, where a crosswalk from south to north is already located. This sidewalk best served, served the population center south of Sitka. Standing policy of the city is that sidewalk be installed spanning an individual lot at the time that the lot is developed. Once lot development reaches 85% of the available footage or available frontage on the road segment, sidewalk is typically recommended to be ordered in by Common Council to complete the remaining sidewalk network, eliminating discontinuity. While the condominiums between Superior and Robert Lane are still under development, more than 85% of the available frontage from on Sitka between Robert Lane and Ontario Road is now developed making the remaining sidewalk along Sitka Street in this area eligible for installation orders by council. In the summer of 2023, Alder Hutchison received a complaint from a constituent requesting that sidewalk discontinuities between Robert Lane to Ontario Road be eliminated by having the council order the remaining sidewalk installed. This request was considered by the Improvement Services Committee on August 16, 2023 with a recommendation to order the sidewalks installed. This recommendation was approved by the Common Council on August 22 of 2023. Current policy and procedure for a request to have sidewalk installed in an area does not carry a requirement for the Department of Public Works to solicit comment or feedback from the potentially affected property owners. I can tell you that I have been with the department for over 16 years. I've been a director for 11. That policy dates back at least to uh, our more, most recent documentation guidelines which are dated from 1990 so that's 34 years uh, as such no individual notification was provided to potentially affected property owners during the initial planning process nor for the august 16 2023 improvement services committee committee meeting nor for the august 23 2023 common council meeting this is consistent with the practice of the city for at least 16 years that the director has worked for the city. City sidewalk installation procedures were applied along the corridor consistent with how sidewalk installation has been performed for at least the last 16 years. Properties having direct access to the sidewalk or vacant properties that could have access to the sidewalk in the future are assessed the cost of installation and assigned the responsibility for maintenance. For properties having no direct access to the sidewalk, these, those are the responsibility of the city for installation and maintenance. Direct access has been determined to mean that either the sidewalk crosses the subject property driveway or for a corner property, the sidewalk being installed in the side yard <coughs> directly connects to a sidewalk which does cross the driveway. So in the case of a corner lot, if there is sidewalk on the side that is served by the driveway, and sidewalk comes in on the other side, making it a 93 corner, and those two sidewalks come together, you can walk from the driveway along the sidewalk to the other side without walking on the grass. So it's kind of, it's continuous. I, so. I do want to make a note that the, there is no picture where it says Sitka sidewalk, it just says 
Yeah, I see. Adobe the PDF, and I, I noticed that when I was looking at the agenda before, but and I yeah. meant to say that. I don't know, Mr. Chairman, if you're able to bring it up. On That's what I'm going to try to do right now. Mark would appreciate a map. Do it. Right? <laughs> Somebody got to carry on the tradition. Maps. Okay, so we were talking on the northeast side of the city. The green area is Crystal McCullough Park. This is McCullough Heights Trail, Christie Lee Court, Ontario Road, Easy Street, Robert Lane, and ultimately Superior Road. So the sidewalk in 23 was required from Robert down to McCullough Heights Trail, where existing sidewalk is, is currently located. So if I turn on the aerial photos from 2023, and we start to zoom in, you can see there is no sidewalk here, and there is no sidewalk on Robert. So that would be a city responsibility. Similarly, this lot would be a city responsibility. We get to easy, there's no sidewalks on easy, so this gap here would be the city's responsibility, uh, would be the property owner's responsibility because it crosses the driveway. The next property over, Lower, they installed the sidewalk when the house was constructed. That was their responsibility. We have two empty lots which will require sidewalk and it will be these properties responsibility to install that sidewalk because their future driveway access will come out on the city. At the time these three properties were constructed, there was no determination as to whether or not the driveway would come out to the cul-de-sac or would it be served off of Sitka. So the developer who subdivided the lots was required to install that sidewalk. Because those sidewalks are no longer on the front of the house and there is no direct access, that will become the city's responsibility for snow maintenance and any future maintenance on the sidewalk should that be required. We now have a property here on the southwest corner of Ontario because the Ontario Road sidewalk does cross the driveway. This sidewalk would provide continuity and connectivity to the Ontario Road sidewalk so that would be the property owner's responsibility for installation and maintenance. Uh, opposite corner on the southeast corner that property owner was responsible for the sidewalk on Ontario and on Sitka. Uh, here as we come down to Christie Lee Court this provides no direct access to the driveway, so this would have been, uh, this will be the city's responsibility. However, opposite side of the same street, there is sidewalk on the east side of Christie Lee Court. So the sidewalk in front of this property and on the Sitka Street side would be the property owner's responsibility. Coming down to Christie Lee Court, we now have this side, uh, this property where again, there is no sidewalk on uh, the Qualified Trail. So this sidewalk would be a city responsibility. Again, it has been that way uh, dating back at least, I, I can guarantee you it's been at least uh, 16 years that I've been here, uh, but according to our records, that goes back at least to 1990 uh, when the last documentation was published. Okay, and I believe there is someone here to speak on this, so. A motion to open the floor. A motion to open the floor by Elder Dewey. Second. Second by Elder Presley and um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. So come forward and tell us your name and your address, please. I am Melissa Steffen. I am on the corner lot of 406 Ontario Road, the intersection in Wasika. Um My main concern about all of this is the delivery because it did be, I got a letter in the mail on March 5th that gave me a 30 day notice to install um, the, sorry, get me emotional, but to install the um, sidewalk, a 30 day notice, and I know people that are in concrete and you cannot install concrete in March in the city of Green Bay because you have to take out an extra license, which is more money. So by April 5th, when I was trying to get communication on this, of what happened, I finally got the information that this was talked about in 2023. I feel like a little bit of disrespect that there was no information that I couldn't come to this, that it was a neighbor who does not have sidewalk on their street, that that they live where they live, that they can take other paths to get to the park 
on Ontario Road to cross the safely to Sitka. So I guess all in all what I'm really concerned about is that you, this committee, knew about this in 2023 and you could have given me a heads up a year in advance to plan. When I asked for, when I, when I asked what the estimate was for my sidewalk was an eight to twelve thousand dollar fee, and to think of that in a thirty day notice was ridiculous, or even to have to pay that off. I don't want to go into what my personal life has or financials, but that is a lot of money and I don't know who else can afford that in a very short period of time. And I know it is something that you guys can put on your taxes with a 3% interest rate to pay off in five years. I'll let you know, you can look it up. My taxes are almost $7,000 a year where I live. I lived in that house for eight years. And as um, he had stated, my house did have the sidewalk because that's how it was built in front of the house. But where it was butted up in 2016, Sitka Road was not curved and guttered, but it was curved and guttered in 2019 by the payment of the man across the street who helped to get that done. So at that time, that could have also been addressed because that is likely why there was no sidewalk because across the street, when we moved in 2016, they had sidewalk across on Sitka and in front of them as the builder put it in, mortgaged into their entire home. I did not have that option because we did not have curb and gutter on Sitka. I guess the ultimate thing is how this all went about in the process of you, the committee knowing a year ago and me finding out March 5th that I had 30 days. So I guess in the, all of this, I'm just hoping that this can either be postponed or rediscussed because again as was shown that not all the houses the lots aren't divvied up there's not for sale signs on the two vacant lots that help the sidewalk that is that's our house and then it has the sidewalk that was showcased that is now behind a berm and as indicated in that statement the city is supposed to be removing the snow if I would have known that, I would have also taken pictures and showed that that was not the case at all this winter or last winter or the winter before. And I always just assumed that somebody else was taking care of it because there wasn't homeowners. And then there was homeowners in there since last year and they also said, that's not our responsibility. So now we have a sidewalk that's just hanging out there that I know this is a cause for safety and the one neighbor requested this but I'm just asking that this be postponed and then as a possibility, since this is something that hasn't been um, looked at in a number of years, is that maybe the process should be that a homeowner should be contacted if said project is going to be happening to be able to discuss it at a, such a large fee. That's all I have. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Okay, then uh, looking for a motion to close the board. Motion to close the board. I'll second that. So, motion by Elder Berry, second by Elder Dilley. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the floor is closed. Uh, anybody else want to come up on this item? Yes. You can step. Uh, oh, I'm, I apologize. I should have asked that before we close the floor. We'll show up the floor. Um, okay, Elder Berry. We'll second that. Okay, Elder Berry makes a motion up on the floor, second by Alder Dilley, everybody say, uh, in favor say aye. 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 aye, and the floor is now open. I right, apologize about that. Uh, John Crab, 505 Larry Wayne. I am also the uh, president of the McAuliffe uh, Park Neighborhood Association. Um, re reason for my presence here today is uh, suggestions to better improve and better serve the community as a whole, the citizens. I'm not advocating for or against uh, this particular issue but it means to address a systemic issue within this uh, process that's currently going on. As I uh, already alluded to, um, we're talking a policy that's been around since in, in the 90s. We can change, things can change. Uh, I'm here because the issue um, was brought up uh, on our neighborhood uh, social media. Uh, there's uh, some frustration uh, with uh, neighbor just spoke as well as a few other neighbors uh, that 
trying to contact, you know, they received their notice from the city and when they try to contact uh, and talk to somebody in the city that um, it, it took uh, quite a long time before they could even uh, reach out and actually speak to somebody on the issue. There's a lot of frustrations, to which point uh, I spoke with the board members, suggested, you know, if we, you know, kind of help intervene, um, just sometimes the associations uh, get a little bit more action uh, and than uh, just the individual. Um, so I'm not coming here just to talk about the uh, issues at hand. I'm also offering up some uh, suggestions. So again, the owners were notified of a safety issue. They, they were not notified of the safety issue that somebody was coming forward that they wanted the sidewalk to be completed. Um, so they never had a chance to come to committee. Uh, they didn't have a chance to go to council to speak on their behalf. It was just an individual going to the alderman saying that they have a safety issue uh, without any type of uh, notice. What, you know, the city can do better. We can at least notify there is a plan in place. Let's notify the people that are going to be affected eventually. Um, like even in this case, there's condos going from Robert to Superior. Right now there's no sidewalk put in. There's a few condos already built, no sidewalk. Safety issues are not going to stop at Robert. They're going to continue on the whole stretch of Sitka. Let's notify those owners now that, you know, sidewalk will be required at some point where they can start saving. They can start planning ahead. So this is not like being blindsided saying you got 30 days for this. Um, and then uh, along with the notification, um, you know, they should be informed that if there is a potential for action, you know, if there was a safety issue, you know, hey, this is coming up to committee, you know, the meeting this day, if you would like to speak on it, here's an opportunity. We can do better with communication. We, we are not in the 90s anymore, we're in the 2020s. Um, and, and then again, again, you know, you know showing there, there's two vacant lots, there's no sidewalk there. You're forcing people existing there to have a sidewalk put in in 30 days. That's what the letter states. You know, let's wait until those there's construction there because it doesn't make sense to put a sidewalk in. Two vacant lots are going to have building there, a lot of construction in and out. Once those um, units start being built, maybe that's the time that these other people that are being required to have sidewalk postpone it for them for you know that it should correspond when those other sidewalks are being put in because it, again it could be a year before there's building it could be a month we don't know but it's like it's fair to them that everything's consistent um, I, I would say the notification letter is uh, pretty tersely worded and harsh as all the owners did something wrong um, should have a different um, you know, notice if it is a new sidewalk versus, you know, hey, your sidewalk needs to be repaired. There is a difference, you know, there we're talking, you know, something that could be a couple hundred dollars for replacing a couple slabs versus now we got to install a complete uh, uh, stretch of a yard here for a sidewalk. That, that's a significant difference. It should not be in the same letter. Uh, so it should just have like some broader parameters you know 30 days is ridiculous even for a commercial or anybody you know it's like you know let, let's be real here you know um some some of it too it, it uh the letter also says if you hire a contractor there's only certain contractors that the city approves that looks bad that looks like there's something else nefarious going on i'm not saying there is not not suggesting this at all, but why is it that I can sit there hire any concrete worker to put in a driveway, but yep, when it comes to a sidewalk, you can only pick from these certain contractors. Owner owner needs to have a permit. The owner had it spelled out the building code and everything else. They should have the option to hire whoever they want. If it is the owner's responsibility, they should be open to hire whoever they want to put in that sidewalk. Um, and then there's, you know,
just a little bit of mixed messaging. You know, there's a planning commission meeting where on Monday, talking about putting in new development, suggested like having the sidewalk uh, put in for the conditioning use permit where and it got into, could be lawsuits, could be, you know, need to do studies, everything else, even though there's safety issues addressed on Finger Road on the other side of the neighborhood. It's like, we're gonna postpone everything on that, even though people do have safety concerns. But here, they're being, you know, these neighbors are being told they have 30 days to have a sidewalk there. So just to recap, you know, we need better information. People should be informed way ahead of time. You know, if it's in the plan that there's gonna be potential for sidewalk, let them know then. They decide to move, you know, next owner coming in, they have that, you know, the notice, they know it's coming, they can plan ahead, they can save up for it, whatever. Um, as well as like anytime there's committee action or anything, they should be notified. Um, again, Sitka, the owners on Sitka, you know, it should correspond, um, you know, having the sidewalk mandated to be put in should be at least um, postponed until those other vacant lots are starting to be developed, that sidewalk would be in for those. Um, and then, again, you know, it, it just seems to be way too much micromanaging on the sidewalks when it's the city's telling it, it's the owner's responsibility to uh, put in, maintain, and care for the sidewalk. Let them choose their contractor. Let them choose to put in. As long as it's meeting the building code, as long as it's meeting the city permit, it should not matter who's doing that work. And as far as safety stuff goes, Let's get some crosswalks marked in on Sitka. You know, we got sidewalk showing going to the park. We don't have a marked crosswalk. Come summertime, a lot of traffic there, a lot of cars are parked on Sitka. It is harder to see as you're walking out. Cars are coming in. Well, that would be something that I would suggest talking to your older about, um, just because we want to stick to the item that's on okay. the agenda. Um, so. Not that, you know, pro or, you know, against it, but just to, Keep it it's just more on, on the yeah. safety side of things. If the yeah. safety's there, let's go safety. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Does anybody, uh, before you no. step away, does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Um, thank you. And is there anybody else? You can sit down. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, uh, let speak. me, you can, we don't have floor. to keep the floor open for you. So. Right. You're special. Floor? <laughs> okay, motion made by Alder Weary. I'll second. And seconded by Alder DeLee. Oh, and all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, the floor is now closed. Okay, I would uh, like to address some of the comments that were, that were raised. Okay. Condominium owners were notified that sidewalk will be required when they pull the building permits for those condominiums. So those sidewalks are going to be installed. They will not be continuous down to uh, between Robert and Superior until 85% of the available frontage. So there will be discontinuities in there as the condos are built. But once 85% of the available frontage is constructed, then sidewalks will be ordered in for the balance of the area. The two vacant lots that were referred to, I have personally spoken to the property owner. The property owner knows that that sidewalk is required and has no problem with it. Sidewalk builders licenses are required within the city of Green Bay for those who are constructing sidewalk that's available to the public. One of the primary differences between sidewalk and a driveway is a driveway represents a permanent limited easement through the city to cross city owned right of way, but it is ex exclusive use of the property owner. So if something were to go wrong with that, that's the property owner's responsibility and the property owner's liability. Whereas sidewalk is open to the public. So the city wants to make sure that we have contractors that are licensed, bonded, insured, and have met a minimum demonstration of competency. Typically, our sidewalk builders licenses, we have approximately 25 to 30 builders, sidewalk builders in the city by the time summertime goes around. I know there's been a lot of discussion made about the 30-day notification window. That's the minimum that's required by statute. However, it's very common. We do indicate in our in our information that if people have questions that they should call the office. It's very common for us, as long as we're notified within 30 days, we are statutorily, statutorily required to give the resident 30 days to cure. They're not required to cure within that. If somebody were to call up and say, Steve, it's March, 
we can't get this done until July. Beautiful. We've had that conversation within the 30-day window. We know you've got the message. We know you're working on it. So that, that's not uncommon at all. Last thing I want to address was there was a reference made to a potential sidewalk study for Finger Road in the Ontario Road. That's the plan commission that was being discussed uh, on Monday night. Um, the difference between those two is no sidewalk study for safety needs has been completed in the Finger Road area. And I think that's one of the things that I will be getting a communication on is a request to have a sidewalk study for safety purposes done there. Sidewalk study for safety purposes is not required on Sitka Street because I happen to drive Sitka Street daily. That is my way to work. Every, almost every day, there are people walking on Sitka on, in the road. I know that there is a demonstrated safety issue there. I personally observe it. So we could do a sidewalk study, but all that sidewalk study was going to do was confirm what we already know. That was a decision that was reached back in 2019 when we reconstructed the road. So that, that request to do a sidewalk st safety study would have been in 19 when we originally ordered that sidewalk done. Again, remember the sidewalk was required as of 2019. The timing of when the sidewalk went in was after we achieved 85% build out. We were kind of toying with that number until the request came through Alder uh, Hutchison's constituent. Then we went out, we took a look, and we said, yep, we're over 85%. Now is the time. So we ordered it. The, the timing issue is, is what was different there. So, so I just wanted to make sure we address some of those. Okay, and Director Grenier, I, I, if, I, if my memory serves me, the whole giving a notice came up, and I, I giving a notice for them. You are correct. No. It yeah, did. I was very concerned about that, so I just want to say that I agree um, that people should be told well in advance. Well, and we are we're kind of dealing with not on the agenda. We're kind of dealing with a similar situation in all the Morgan's district with a sidewalk that we accepted a grant from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for a transportation alternatives program. We're putting sidewalk in on a mile and a quarter of Manitowoc Road, and now that. Uh, the designers are out there surveying for that sidewalk. Residents are starting to ask questions because similarly we did not offer a public information meeting ahead of the decision to put that sidewalk in. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would ask that that get looked into changing the policy, but does anybody have any questions or comments? What kind of extensions do they offer on situations like this? Um, extensions to... Uh, I know you made the, the comment about how someone said, you know, July is when we would get after it. Uh, you know, if a, if a person has to budget for something like this, what kind of leeway does the city have on that? Um, if we know you're intending to do it this year, we'll work with you. But the issue that you will face is if there was a decision. Now, I can't tell the council what to do. All I can do is give you advice. Okay. So my advice to you is, and I've given this advice once before, and the council did not react the way that I thought they should. So it has happened. Um, you now have a known safety issue, a documented safety issue. And the council took a, uh, measures to address that. If the council were to reverse that decision and not require that sidewalk any longer, and an accident were to occur, you have voluntarily surrendered your legislative immunity. So the city would be liable, and each of the alders would personally and individually be liable. You are waiving your liability. And I have consulted with the law department before I came here tonight to make sure I was not misspeaking. Any other questions? Uh, Alder Presley? Even though it is outside of that 30-day window from the notice now, right, um, could Ms. Stefan still uh, ask for an extension? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, and it, it appears that Ms. Yes. Stefan would like to speak again, so. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Okay. Motion by Alder Second. Dilley, second by Alder Weary. All in favor say aye. 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 The, it's now open, you can come forward. My only comment is, is with, seeing the two vacant lots, when are those going to be put in? 
That'll be done this year. When this year? Because there's the the property owner has indicated that they do not want to voluntarily cure. They're not going to do the work themselves. They would rather just let the time expire and the city take care of it. So we have a city-wide contract for sidewalk installation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when they're starting that. Should be soon. It should be, but it should be soon now that we've gotten to the beginning of May. Yep. Um, and sometimes that contract starts from east side and works its way west, sometimes opposite. Um, it all depends on where the orders are and what uh, and, and in what uh, sequence we get the orders out. But any time between now and 1st of November. So you will put in sidewalk when there is not a house being Absolutely, built. in this case. Right. So my only comment is, is if that's not going to be put in, and if there's not a plan or a time, that's the concern from the neighbor that was brought to Elderman was that he lives on Easy Street so that he could walk up Sitka. So if those houses are not going to have sidewalk, then the postponement would make sense for me because then he would still be walking on the road or on someone else's grass. They're, they are getting sidewalk. Yes, but we don't know when. This year. Okay. Because we have, because we have a process, we've got a plan moving forward, and we have an end date, a maximum end date in mind, yeah. that satisfies the legal requirements. Okay. From 2023. That's just my only concern. So, okay, yep. nice. thank you. Does anybody have any questions for her? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Anybody else want to, as long as we have the floor open, did you want any, anybody have any comments? Okay, so. I'll make a motion to close the floor. Motion made by Elder Lee. Second. Close the floor. Second by Elder Presley. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And the floor is now closed. And um, can we maybe have Elder Hutchison Absolutely. weigh in on this? Okay. Uh. I think uh, Melissa Stefan was very kind to me. Thank you. We've uh, we've been interchanging emails back and forth. She let me know fairly early her opinion of the letter that she received, and I have to somewhat agree that the letter is if you've got as much dollar amount invested in this is kind of kind of harsh. You know what I, what I mean. Uh, so sidewalk world and I, as I told her I don't like the sidewalk world because all it is is making people construct something they maybe didn't intend even though it is providing safety okay it's just a difficult world to live in and I said it's difficult it, it's a difficult thing um, I remember in the meeting, I was going to take it upon myself to let these people know, and I didn't do it. So mm -hmm. I, I apologize. I was going to let them know, and I didn't do it. Uh, it was above and beyond what you had to do, what we standard do, but I too felt, man, we're doing all this stuff, and it's going to come next spring, and they don't know about it. So um, I already suggested in conversation with staff that maybe we ought to look at this but in in terms of notification because I think what Melissa Stefan is saying is geez should have let me know okay um, so what that means though is time and money for the city because if we're going to let people know, someone's going to have to write the letter and send it out to everyone who's getting sidewalk. A lot of people. But I think in this instance, uh, it just shows that that may be appropriate. We're going to have to discuss this, I think, later. This isn't the issue now. If I remember correctly, and so correct me if I'm wrong, Director Grenier, didn't Elder Grant bring something forward on that, requesting that? about people being notified prior to sidewalks. I don't know that it was necessarily a formal communication. I know there was discussion. It was. Look yeah, so I think what I'm suggesting is we should formalize that. Um, in regards to her asking for presenting or, or um,
to rescind the resolution because of the legalese I would recommend against that um, because it's there we've already made, baked that pie um, I don't think we want to rescind it and have the legal issues hanging over our heads and there are people using that road they're in the road I, I travel the road two or three times a week and two out of three times I see people in the road it, it just is happening um, so um, but I don't want to disregard what's been brought up here um, so I guess my what I would suggest is we do not resend the resolution but we think ahead as to how we're going to possibly change a standard that's been in existence for 30 plus years I know staff doesn't like to hear that because the standard is the standard is the standard but at the same time I think um, ideas have been brought up that should be considered that's what I got. Okay, Do you guys you. have any questions or? Do you have any questions? Sure. Yeah. I think so, Alder. Um, did you want to put in that communication, or I don't know if staff would voluntarily, but you know, just be like review with possible action, process, policy, um, sidewalk. Well, and actually, I think uh, in recognition of what Alder Eck has suggested. Um, I think what I would really appreciate would be a joint communication from yourself and Alder Grant, because I know she did mention this before. I, so I think it would be important to recognize Alder Grant's contribution as well. Okay. And potentially something along the lines of consideration of amending the sidewalk installation policy to require notification of potentially affected property owners for new sidewalk installation that is not identified on a recorded plat. Because if it is, if the sidewalk requirements are on the recorded plat, that plat document is provided during title work when you purchase a home, when you build, what have you. There is a notification process there indicating a need for that sidewalk at some point in the future. And when you pull a building for a bit, then it's, it, it's identified, but that's only on a recorded plat. If a situation like Sitka, where that doesn't exist on a recorded plat, or all the grants uh, communication was relative to the sidewalk we put alongside of Huron Road between Humboldt Road and Bay Highlands last year. And there again, the sidewalk was not required at the time of plat. There was a sidewalk study that was performed. We determined that because there was a worn cow path in the terrace that was necessary, and we went ahead with the project, but we did not invite all the affected property owners. That's where that's where her communicate or her, her concerns came from. So I think I could work with the alders to craft a communication for their joint submittal, and that would be a future agenda item. We'd be happy to handle that. Okay, okay. I can work with Alder Grant. Now, to be clear, this is at the time of committee consideration, right? Not after the fact. Or are you talking after the fact? Well, I'm for future. Submittal of that type of communication doesn't necessarily apply to this because as you indicated action's been taken on this. Oh on this. No, but I'm, I'm talking about yeah. The communication, we could have that communication uh, put together either for next week's council um, and potentially introduced at the committee uh, two weeks from now or alternatively uh, introduced the late communication at council in three weeks time and we could have the first hearing here in a month. Okay, well, what I mean is the communication will go out to property owners affected before it's considered by the committee. Correct. We would notify the, the what, what the requirement, and I'm just, I'm kind of thinking out loud here, okay? Uh, but what we would have would be a requirement if sidewalk has been requested or if a sidewalk study is being performed in an uh -huh. area. That. When we bring the sidewalk study to the committee for consideration with possible action on a request to have sidewalk ordered in, okay. that we would notify not on a public hearing because it's not a public hearing. Okay. It would be a public meeting, okay. but we would provide a list of property owners where the sidewalk would be installed in front of the houses. 
uh, those a letter would go out to each property owner indicating that a meeting is being held at the committee meeting um, and this item is going to be discussed okay well I'll talk with you with Alder Grant sure later on this issue I think the timing if it's in a week or two weeks or a month that's I think that's okay me personally so okay okay thank you for your time thank you any other questions or comments okay um so i'm looking for a motion and it okay sorry it's oh, sorry um steve does that seem about right eight to twelve thousand for it doesn't seem like a big story. uh it seems a little on the high side i took a look to see how much frontage uh miss stefan has and just based on my knowledge uh it's less than 200 feet uh and i'm um, looking at something at a 14 dollars Fourteen dollars a square foot range, so I'm anticipating somewhere between six and eight thousand. My letter had indicated I had six hundred fifty square feet to fill. Well, I looked. Um, Do you have your letter with you? Do not. No. Okay. If it's 650 and if it's 12 bucks a foot, that's well, and I have the again, I went right to Brown Dollar. Do we need to open the floor? Well, let me just okay. bring up how I came up with my number so you can see the seven's name right here. There's 117.92 feet of sidewalk, so that's lineal feet. Sidewalk is typically five feet wide, so let's just call it 120 by five make is 600 square feet at $14 a square foot would be $8,400 at, at $11 a square foot it would be $6,600 so 11 to 14 is about what we've been running for for sidewalk over the past couple of years it was an estimate right that's that's letter. that's an estimate I just gave you right now no she's saying on the letter uh, that's an estimate in the letter the letter indicates that we can't give you what the prices are because we haven't bid the sidewalk contract this year but based off last year's prices it could be in this range okay so it's not set in stone correct okay six to eight ish is what you had just stated the, uh, the sidewalk yeah is you're saying it's six thousand six to eight thousand six to six hundred eighty four and i know it's not maybe like super great news but <laughs> it is less um, hands are tied but are tied but that safety issue I mean I was involved with that whole Mr. Kennedy thing and it was not fun for the city at all you know correct it, we are now bound by especially when we put in that we're going to address safety concerns and then to go back on it would I certainly don't want to open up myself and everybody else does but um, <clears throat> yeah. I look forward to the communication coming forward because I do think we need to address that you know if there's other things we can glean other processes definitely bring them forward because we can always improve we should um, I, I don't see a, a way out from under this so I, I make a motion to deny so we have a motion to deny by Alder Weary do we have a second 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 by Alder Presley all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Um, and it, it passes I was gonna say no soon I'll say maybe but, um, okay and um, Went on to number three, consideration with possible action on a request by Todd Wood of 508 Hireman Street for permission to park a truck and trailer on street overnight for at least 10 days, 10 occurrences during 2024 and possibly more dates. All occurrences are on Saturday, May 4th, 18th, June 8th. 22nd, July 13th, August 3rd, August 17th, September 14th, and 28th, 2024. Uh, Director Grenier. Mr. Old Wood owns a race car and trailer that he typically stores off site. However, uh, racing Saturday nights, comes home late, wants to be able to park on the street, uh, can't park it in the driveway, it's just too big. Um, and then on Sunday, Hold would on return to his storage location the following day. Okay, so you. Um, Staff supports. That staff supports it. Um, it. Are you here to speak on that? Yes. Uh, okay. I need to open the floor if you're going to speak. 
I'll make a motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor by Elder DeLee. Seconded. Second by Elder Presley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. You, would you state your name and address, please? Todd Wood, Five Void Hireman. Okay. Uh, the occurrences are uh, from, from a Friday night to a Saturday morning. Oh, uh, okay. We that, had, that's not that's not a big deal. Yeah, we raised Friday night, and then I keep the, the car and trailer in New Franken. It doesn't make sense for me to run way back to New Franken and then come home and have to get the car again Saturday morning. Uh, that's what our request is to come to be able to leave it on the street Friday night. So all of these need to be shifted back by a day? By a day, yes. Okay, um, thank you for that clarification. If I may clarify, remember that it's no parking 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., so there's no parking. So no, correct. The no, no parking, parking on the street is Saturday. 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., so it would be on Saturday. Okay. okay. Well, that That's why I wrote it that way. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. No, so <laughs> it's, it's correct, but kind of not correct. <laughs> a, a, a confusing. Same thing over there. Yes. Correct, but confusing. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? All right. The only question Maybe. I would have is where are you racing and what class? <laughs> WIR Street Eliminator. Okay. We started our program. Uh, first points race was last Saturday. So, so far, so good. Something is that like a stop car? No. Okay. okay. No, it's a drag street. Oh. Drag Straight line, yes. My dad used to race midgets. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Cars. Yeah. Cars. Saturday so cars. Saturday night, I'll be entering yes. my 26 season as a mechanic in the IMCA division. So, 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 so. Very familiar with racing these. I used to work for Gene at, at Deep Rock. Yeah. Okay. This is a reason. They sold the station. I used to work there. So that's where I would leave the car at night. Sure. And then go pick it up again the next morning. I don't have that option anymore. <laughs> Well, um, if you know anything else, thank you for coming in to, and uh, let me get, or look for a motion. motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor, made by Elder Deleen. Second. Second by Elder Presley, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. The, the floor is now closed. And um, move to approve. Okay, move to approve by Elder Second. Deleen, second by Elder Weary, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It has been approved. It does go to the full council next Tuesday. So I'll have to be here next Tuesday? You don't um, have to. I okay. don't think it's going to be a problem, but I'm glad you said that first. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on yeah. him. Um, <laughs> I'm the parking manager. We, we support the request. We have no issues with it. Okay. Yeah. Now, am I still going to have to call every night? To we have the dates. If, if, there, if there are additions or changes, just let us know. Yeah, any changes to those dates, let us know. Okay. But those dates will be fine. Okay. Well, he'll have to call in for the fourth because he's got this weekend, right? Because that'll be before it comes. Right. Well, we, and we, we, can, we can note it on our okay. enforcement. You, you, get yeah. hand, you get six occurrences automatic, right? Right. We can count that as one of the six, and if, when the council I'll approves, just, then we restore the six and these go on the, the permit. So I'll have to call Friday night. So he's covered? No, you've already covered. told us Friday night. Yeah. I'll make sure you send me a, the calendar for the year okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And we are on number four. <laughs> Consideration. Sometimes it's like this. Uh, with possible action on request by Jennifer Pagel of 1070 Kenwood Street to rescind outstanding invoices for early garbage set out. Um, and I'm going to yeah. save some discussion. Ms. Pagel contacted me. She was forced to work overtime tonight, so she can't be here. She wants to be here, so I'll just make a motion to hold this till her next meeting so she okay. can attend. Alder Weary makes a motion to I'll hold second. it. Second by Alder DeLee. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and that passes. We will hold that. So number five, consideration with possible action on requests by Department of Public Works to purchase a remote control. Sounds fun. Grab? Oh, it's a, I was going to say gravely. To me, it looks gravely. Okay, Opus. I was right. 40 RC mower from the Aaron's company, requisition number 110. We had in our equipment purchase plan this year a slope capable lawnmower. Uh, Nathan Walkendog, the fleet manager, doing his due diligence, has continued to do some research and found a remote control slope capable mower so you're not actually on the operator's not on the mower you're not placing yourself in harm's way and you can still mow on the slopes um it's we had thirty thirty thousand dollars budgeted for this this particular piece of equipment came in at thirty two thousand eleven 
it's marginally over what we have budgeted. We've had savings on other pieces of equipment. Uh, so staff is very comfortable recommending the approval of this. Does anybody have any questions? Sounds like a Marvel villain. No, I'm just jealous. Grieving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second that. Okay, move to approve by Alder Weary, second by Alder Delee. All those in favor say aye. 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 And it passes. So on to number six. You get your toy. <laughs> Consideration with possible action to approve the McMahon Associates Inc. contract amendment for the C Seymour Park West Stormwater Pond project. This is our never ending saga at Seymour, uh, trying to get that stormwater management pond in at Seymour West. Uh, additional modifications to the design that were requested by um, Parks Department. Um, $22,920 is within my authority as a director to expend. However, when added to the remainder of the existing contract, that's going to push us up to $95,000, which is well over my spending authority. So we're here requesting uh, authority to spend that. This is going to get us to the finish line. We're in the process of bidding this one out. So staff recommends award. Any questions? OK. Or a motion? Motion to approve the amendment. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Elder Presley. I'll second that. Second by Elder Delee. All those in favor say aye. 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 And it passes. I don't usually say of those opposed when I hear everybody says aye, just so you know. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me. So, um, Okay, so number seven, consideration with possible action on a request from the Department of Public Works Sanitation Department to bulk purchase tipper carts for stock replenishment. I just bought a new one. Yay, it's bigger than our other one. That might and be a slightly different food. shape, but the capacity is all 95 to 96 gallons, somewhere in there. Okay, it looks bigger and it's a um, Unless you have one of the original 68 she gallon may have carts. One, it, she I she do, said I, blue, it's a recycling cart. She uh, may have one of the original 68 Yeah, it's a car. different color blue, and I actually I put them next to each other. and it's Yeah, then you probably yeah. have the smaller, the original. Right. Before I'm excited because I size. needed more room for recycling. So. So we have a uh, request for approval of a no substitute purchase or a sole source. Reason for that, we're talking about $40,000 worth of cards, which represents in truckload quantity uh, to get a shipping discount. Um, we're going with Toter, which is our existing. Uh, when we went to uh, automated collection, we did a pretty exhaustive research on cart manufacturers and Toter is the preferred vendor. They have the best, longest duration quality uh, on their carts. So the staff does feel comfortable recommending the Toter carts. Uh, plus it assists us with inventory and parts for maintenance if we need to do that. One of the things, oh, off the, completely off topic, but you know, I'm just gonna throw it out there. One of the things we are gonna have to consider that's gonna come before us this year is 2014, is when we implemented uh, curbside uh, automated collection. At that time, we purchased carts which had 10 year warranties on them. Mm. Warranty periods up. So we have been fixing carts at no cost to the property owner for the last 10 years. But one of the things we're going to have to take up as a committee is a decision on what are we going to do with 10 year old carts going forward. So I just want to throw that out there. It's a future agenda item we'll be talking about. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? About but the two of you are really happy you wound up on high end. This is exciting <laughs> stuff, yeah. I'll move to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Elder DeLee. Second. Second by Elder Presley. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. Okay, number eight. And with, oh. with the committee's uh, approval, we would suggest taking eight, nine, and ten together. Yes. Okay. Make a motion to take eight, nine, ten together. All right, and um, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, and then we'll discuss them and then vote on it, correct? Correct. Okay. Director. So F8 is to report the award of Parks Project 1-24, Joannes Park Parking Lot Resurfacing, to MCC Incorporated in the amount of $263,400.70. I think Colburn's misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
I guess I could read them. I didn't. I could no, that, that, that's to that, you. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, item nine was to report the award of pavement contract pavement two twenty four Finger Road reconstruction to DeGroat Incorporated in the amount of seven hundred and fifteen thousand eight hundred seventy six dollars fifty eight cents. And item ten is to report the award of resurfacing one twenty four including sewer and water, to Peters Concrete Company in the amount of $3,787,062.41. For the benefit of the two freshman alders, um, when we have committee and council schedules which are variable or when we go to summer schedule, when we're not meeting as frequently, the business of the Department of Public Works, when we're in the process of bidding contracts to try to get them on the street, get contractors engaged, and make sure we have enough construction time to get the work actually completed during the year, we will come and we will make a request in front of the committee to give the com uh, to have the committee make a recommendation. Council, council ultimately defers and gives us the authority to award these contracts at a staff level and then report out what we're what we've done at a later time. That breaks with the normal process of us coming with a recommendation to award you making the recommendation the common council make, taking the final action. It's simply to keep the process moving along. Sure. So in all cases, contracts were bid out in accordance with our typical process and with state statute. Low responsive responsible bidder was selected in all cases. And I'm pleased to announce that in all three, the low responsive responsible bidder was under the engineer's estimate, so we're very happy with the award of the bid. We're reporting out that we have made those awards, contractors have been noted, contract documents are being exchanged between the contractor and the city, and we are actively in the process of engaging the contractors to start the work. So we're looking for a motion to receive and place a file. Motion to receive and place a file. By Alder Weary. Second. Second by Elder Presley. So all in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. So we're moving on to number 11, report of actions, uh, again, actions taken by the Department of Public Works. Uh, granting of license for the sidewalk builder, Josh Bailey Concrete, St Summers Construction, Fisher Concrete, Ramco Construction Services, Green Bay Concrete LLC, um, and the Underground Sprinkler System, um, New Irrigation LLC, doing business as conserve irrigation. And again, just for the benefit of the two new alders, um, up until about three years ago or so, somewhere in that neighborhood, um, these would come before the committee for the committee to take action on. As they're, they're typically procedural in nature, especially with an approval, the committee and council gave us the authority to approve the licenses at a staff level. However, if a license is denied or recommended, recommended for denial by, uh, by staff, the licensee still has the chance to appeal that and then it would come before you. So again, procedural issues, we're just taking care of business issuing the license when we, when we determine that a license should be issued uh, and then we're reporting out to you that we have taken that action. So we're looking for a motion to receive and place on file. Make a motion to receive and place on file. Okay. Um, made by Alder DeLee. Second. Second by Alder Presley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And moving on to informational director's report on recent activities of the Public Works Department. I am pleased to tell you that I have no report for you. <laughs> okay. And um, do we, so do we don't need to take a, receive and place on file, do we? Uh, you can receive and place on file my report, but I have no report. Motion receive and place on file made by Alder Weary. Second by, who was that? Was that you? Oh, Alder Delee. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. Our next Improvement and Services Committee meeting is scheduled for May 15, 2024. Um, so I am looking for motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. And motion made by Alder Delee. Second by Alder Weary. And all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. adjourned. I, it's against my grammatical. <laughs>